I'm Mike Huckman at the BioBuzz Center, where I am pleased to welcome Dr. Trevor Mundell, who is the president of Global Health at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Dr. Mundell, thanks for being here. It's great to be here. I love being in the biotech community over here. There's so many ideas that we could apply to Global Health. Well, you came out of the biopharmaceutical industry. You're a veteran of at least a few major pharmaceutical companies. You've recently been joined, obviously, by another industry veteran and icon from Roche Genentech. Dr. Susan Desmond Hellman is the CEO of the Gates Foundation. So does this represent either a new or enhanced strategic shift at the foundation to really forge stronger relationships with the industry? Mike, I think there's an element of that. Uh, we've had strong relationships, uh, certainly with pharma companies that have helped us with their capabilities, and we've started to develop stronger relationships with the biotech industry. Certainly, Sue's onboarding gives us a chance to expand that dramatically with her insights into biotech and her connectivity in biotech as well. I'd say, you know, in addition to that, Sue's just a great person. We so all know that. Beyond the connectivity, she brings a huge amount of value just in terms of her human insight to the foundation. Yeah, not to mention her expertise and experience. Exactly. And thought exactly. leadership. Exactly. Right. So I understand that one of your jobs here at the Bio Convention this year is to unveil a David Letterman style top 10 list of what the Gates Foundation and your team believes the industry could be doing a little bit better to work in collaboration and to make more progress. What, do you want to tick those off? And I'm not going to provide the, the drum rolls and the rim shots. I right, promise. right, right. So we did come with this list of 10 priorities and it was based on my coming down to the Chicago meeting last year and people saying, well, what exactly do you want? Can you be more specific? So we said, well, we'll come with a list of what we see as some of our high priorities. And those and are? They, they include interventions such as having a great test in pregnant women that would let us know they were at risk for preterm birth, so we could have some intervention. What would you do with that information? What would, a, what would a, uh, an expectant mother do with that information? There, there would have to be the intervention, and it would have to be something simple, but frequently it's just something as simple as micronutrients and getting a decent diet. So we could target those scarce resources into exactly the most vulnerable woman and make that resource nutrition available to them. What else? Well, we have things like um, almost a science fiction aspect of surveillance. So in TB, where people exchange infec infectious aerosols, how do we know that these aerosols in public spaces, could be train stations, could be schools, could be prisons, are present? Biosurveillance has made huge strides in terms of picking up organisms that could be pathogens. Can we have a CO2 detector for hmm. infectious TB in public spaces? Can we? I think we can. All right. So what are the next steps? What are the action items then on this top 10 list that the Gates Foundation has presented uh, here at Bio this week? Well, it's coming out on our blog uh, called the Impatient Optimist. So people can have a look at that list, see whether they have something which intersects with it. I would say that we're not totally constrained to that list. It, I mean, many people come up with enthusiastic new ideas. I had one in the, in the session today, which is outside the list. So we are interested in ideas from biotech, but this gives a little bit of focus and specificity to what that, that interest actually is. Finally, under your purview at the Gates Foundation is the area of vaccines. This is a, a, a situation that's getting a lot of attention from all sorts of different directions, whether it's access, whether it's infrastructure, whether it's cold storage, whether it's development, et cetera, et cetera. And yet there's still this controversy. How frustrated are you with the myth purveyors that are out there regarding the safety and effectiveness of vaccines? It's really a tragedy. You know, the basic package of vaccines, the pentavalent vaccine, a rotavirus vaccine, a pneumococcal vaccine, have already been game changed wherever they've been deployed. And in, we look at the numbers of the 12 million kids who were dying in 1990 versus in 2013, 6.3 million, so almost a 6 million improvement in the number of kids dying. A big amount of that came from the introduction of basic vaccines. And people who would want to deny that fact, I think, are just on the wrong side of history. So, you know, we see vaccines as magical in global health. Because of the difficulties in access, it's an even greater premium. We may get people once in their early lifetime, and on that one occasion, we need to give them something which protects them and is so hugely effective. 
Um, it is a problem that surveillance, uh, pharmacovigilance is not great in many of the countries that we work in. So we don't know all the consequences of some of the interventions. But we're working hard to improve that system. And provably from the efficacy and the safety that we've seen in the US, Europe, and developed countries, mm -hmm. we know that these interventions are not only highly effective, but safe as well. Vaccines are magical. I don't think I've ever heard it put that way, but it's certainly eloquent and, and somewhat poignant as well. Dr. Trevor Mundell, uh, the head of global health at the Gates Foundation. Thanks again for joining us Thank you, here at the BioBus Center.